This morning's webinar will be covering Tiger Prism and directory and integration. The first part that we're going to discuss is we're just going to go through some basics of the directory and why is the directory so important in Tiger Prism. So Tiger Prism requires a directory to allow users to generate reports and dashboards based upon hierarchy and users. If an endpoint isn't assigned to a tree and a report or dashboard is run against that tree, those endpoints will not appear in the totals or will not be selectable in the endpoint itemization. So what options are there to maintain the Tiger Prism directory trees? There are two options available. You can manually maintain the tree. So by doing this, you will manually update the tree by creating departments or tree nodes, creating people and creating endpoints. Through here, you would also have to do any modifications. So for example, if anybody changes department, changes name, changes extension or moves, you will have to do this manually. Tiger though, if required, can do a one-off import to create a base tree. So what this means is that we can do a CSV import to create a base tree for you. And from going forward from that point, you will have to make any manual changes yourself. The second option is directory integration. So directory integration automates the directory trees and synchronizes with an external source, allowing for automation of adding hierarchy users and endpoints, including adding deletions and all changes to department levels. This process will automatically create history and I'll explain this as we go along. So with integration, you can see all changes being made in the directory by updating your source information, and this will then reflect within Tiger Prism. So you cannot make changes within the Tiger Prism directory when you have directory integration enabled. You physically cannot do it. The software will not allow you to make changes. So if there are any mistakes, then it will be done through your source information. So. There is the option to have multiple trees as well within Tiger Prism. So why have multiple trees and what purpose do they serve? So the ability to have multiple trees allows you to be flexible when generating reports upon different hierarchies so that levels are based upon how the relevant areas of the business report on what they require. And it also allows you to visualize these hierarchies as well within a tree. For example, the finance team may look upon employees as cost center codes and underneath these cost center codes will just be all the extensions that belong to these cost centers. So when a finance team requires a report, all they require in their report is how much this cost center has spent. They don't require things like names, they don't require things like locations, departments or anything like that. They simply just require cost center code and then how much each cost center code has spent or it may be the sales manager. So the sales manager requires a report to show locations, departments and sub departments so they can see how they're distributing their calls through that structure. So rather than having to reconfigure the directory each time, what you can do is you can have multiple trees so that you can run reports based upon these different tree structures. Trees can have unique names and they can also be independently controlled. So if you're running a campaign for a short time and you want to create a tree that's manual, that's fine. You can create a manual tree. You can copy hierarchy structures from your integrated tree onto your manual tree and then you can make your manual changes at that point. If you do have an integrated tree though, it will say is synchronized and we'll cover this later and you will not be able to make changes on that tree. So how does directory integration work? So Tiger Prism has an additional module that maintains the Tiger Prism tree structure for generating department and cost reporting and for dashboards. Directory integration will connect to a master source of data which the business will maintain. Then build up, then Tiger will integrate to this and build the tree. Rather than having to update both your master source and Tiger Prism, you will only then need to update the master source. If you don't have directory integration running and it's something that you would like, then you can also contact your account manager after this session. The great thing as well about having the data in a master source is it helps your business. There's no point having all of the directory structure only in Tiger because it doesn't help the rest of the business. By having it in a centralized source that other applications, other users have access to, it also helps the business as well. 
So Tiger can support any of these sources of information, including ODBC, LDAP, Active Directory, Active Directory Forest, Flat Files, AXL, SQL Servers, and ACWIN, including Postgres and XML interfaces if you have one of these running as well. Each source requires some sort of query. So we would need to know from yourselves how we would get that information out of that system, but it's not possible to merge data, i.e. I can't get usernames from active directories and endpoints from an MSSQL server. However, though, you can connect to multiple sources to build the trees. For example, you may have all of your users in Active Directory, but Active Directory doesn't contain non-people. So what you can do is you can create a flat file that will contain things like lift phones, common area phones, and conference rooms. And what this will do is this will add the data together to create the tree. Now, obviously the flat file would have to contain the same tree structure as your main data source does. So how will, or why would we manually maintain the directory? So you can manually update the tiger tree. This means each user's department, tree nodes, endpoints will be manually created, modifications, deletions will be manually undertaken by a tiger user. And as explained earlier, we can do a one-off import to create that structure. And as I also explained, you do have the ability to copy and paste from one tree to another. So you're not always starting with a completely blank tree if you don't want to. So as part of every time a change is made, either it be manually through the interface or through directory integration, history is created. So items within the directory structure will have history. So what this means is that every time you make a change, from that second that you make that change, history will be created. For example, if Kate is in the silversmith's department in January and she makes some calls, and then she has made calls during this department assigned to silversmith, when she moves to Cardiographer on the 29th of January, all calls Kate makes will then be assigned to Cardiographer. Kate, though, will appear twice on the report, but it will then mention that she's in two separate departments. So all calls before she was moved will be assigned to her current department, and then any new calls made in her new assigned department will be then assigned to that new department. So this is what we mean by history. As I said, she may appear twice on the report. She may appear four times on the report if she's been moved four times during the time that you generate your report over. But all it means is her calls would be correctly assigned to the correct department she was in during that time period. So let's now go and have a look at Tiger Prism. And the only thing we'll look at here is the directory. So within the directory, maintain the directory. So what options do we have when we create directory items within Tiger Prism? If your tree states is synchronized, this means that you cannot make any changes in here. So if I try and add an option, it won't allow me. If I try and move something, it won't allow me. So if I try and drag, I'm not able to make any changes because this tree is synchronized. So what this means is this tree is controlled by directory integration. Therefore, no changes can be made on this tree. So I have two options. I can create a manual tree to do this. You can click the plus button and you can create a new tree by giving the tree a new name. Then from here, you could do something like copy a level from this tree and then paste it into your new tree. Or once you've created a new tree, you can come into the manual mode and you can do things like add organizations. So organizations are tree node levels. So these make the hierarchy within your tree. So to create a new one, you click on the cog at the end here, you create an organization, you choose which type that organization is. So we could say it's a subsidiary here, and we could give this a name. So I'm going to call this department test. You can then assign an email address to this. This email address can then be used within the reporting to send emails to these department levels. And you can also assign different tariffs if required for that department. And you can also enable digit masking. So if you want to mask the last four digits of any calls made by anybody in that department, you can do this by enabling digit masking here. Once you've created the level, you can then add sub levels. So underneath test, I may want to add one here called a department. 
called sales. And I can say that all emails for this department need to go to sales at tigercoms.com. I'm not worried about digit masking. I don't need to apply a tariff to this level, but I can create this level here. If I want to go further, I can then add another organization and I can add sub levels here. I could call them teams. So I could say this is England, add another department or another team and call it Wales, for example, here. You can have up to nine levels under here. That's the maximum you're allowed is nine levels here. So once I've created my structure, I have two options. I can now add a person to this level. So by highlighting England and adding a person, I can then choose a person from my list here and add those, or I can add multiple people in here as well. So I can add the selected users and add them in here. Or I could go into another department and I can drag and drop users into the new department here. If I do want to move someone, it will just make sure that I want to confirm I am moving them and it will then move Kira from apparel workers into Wales. If I want to move whole departments, I can as well. So I can highlight the level above and I can also drag and drop levels into here. And it's just going to confirm that I want to move all of those people. So I can say yes, confirm. And it will then move all of those people for me under that new level that I've created. So by moving people and moving departments, it will automatically bring all their endpoints and it will also bring all the users across. So once you've added or moved departments across, as I said, it will bring across their extension numbers with them as well. If you have manually assigned a person, what you will also need to do is assign a piece of equipment to them. So what the piece of equipment is, is things like endpoints. You can assign CDR sources and channels, but the most important one here will be endpoints. So to assign an endpoint to a person, click on endpoint here, and you can then choose from the list here which numbers you wish to assign to the people. A person can have multiple endpoints, but please note, an endpoint can only appear once in a tree. So you cannot have multiple endpoints assigned in the tree here. It's the same with people. You cannot assign a person more than once in a tree. So once you've created your hierarchy, you then have the ability also to search. So you have your wildcards here. So if you're looking for a particular person or a particular phone number, you could search for the word map, for example, here at the top. And it will then go and find all users in the directory that match the word map. Or I may be interested in the word Smith, for example, or the word here. So maybe I need to move Daniel Paul into another department. I can do a search for Daniel. I can find them and then I can move them into a different department over here. To delete people or to delete departments, it's simple as clicking on the cog and removing that item from the directory tree by just clicking on remove. It will confirm then, do you want to remove them? Yes. Or you may require to make edits to do this. Click on the cog here and you can then edit that level. And you can then give it a new description. I said, you can also copy from one tree to another. So if you wanted to come into this level here, you can copy and then come into your new tree here, click on the cog, and then you'd be able to paste as well from here. What you will notice as you create items, as I said, it will create history. So what it will mean now is if that any calls are made by this phone, on this date here, so going forward on these dates here, all calls on this phone now 
from this date will be assigned to Matthew Ringsell, which will then be assigned to England, which will then be assigned to sales, which will then be assigned to test. Any calls previous to that date not be assigned to Matthew, they'd be assigned to whoever else had that phone at the time. Again, because I moved Kira from one department to the other, any calls that Kira made in the, her previous department, so before that date, will be assigned to her previous department. Any new calls Kira makes will now be assigned to Wales Sales Test. As mentioned before, if your tree is synchronized and you go through your tree and you find that there are any issues, for example, there are spelling mistakes, they've got incorrect extension numbers assigned to them, what you'll need to do is you'll need to go and fix this in your source data. So whether this be in Active Directory, in your flat file, whatever the data may be, make sure you make the changes. And then if required, what you can then do is you can then refresh the directory to pick up any changes. So to do this, what you'll then need to do is go onto your Tiger server, into your DI folder, into your bin folder, and in here will be a Tiger Prism DI UI XE. You'll need to double click on this, and then in your tray bar at the bottom here will be a, a Tiger Eye. You will have to right click on this Tiger Eye and click on Configure Integration. What this will now do is pop up the integration window. You can then choose which tree that you want to refresh and then click the refresh button. So what this will do then is it will go and read in all your information from your directory integration source and make any changes that it needs to. So if you've changed someone's name and you need to update it there and then, make the change in your source, open up DI and then click the refresh button to reflect that change in your tree. Note though, most integrations will run once a day. So if you don't need it desperately, or if you don't need the change to be made desperately, what you can do is you can wait until the next day and then that change should be reflected. Again, you will have separate trees in here if you do have more than one tree. So if you have more than one tree, you may have to click refresh a couple of times here. So once you've clicked your refresh button, after a few minutes, the directory should then update and reflect any changes that you had made in your source data. So one other thing that's important within your directory is making sure that your directory contains all of the phones that are making calls within your business. So Tiger have a report that shows you all phones that haven't been assigned in your directory. So to generate this report, what you'll need to do is go into the reports module Underneath your management reports, you will have an unknown endpoints report. The unknown endpoints reports are endpoints that have generated a call but have not been assigned in your directory or in your tree. To generate the report, choose your dates. So I'm going to look for data in October. I can choose my CDR source if I want to. And most importantly, I will need to choose which tree I wish to run this report against. I can then set my report to show me the top unknown endpoints by calls, by cost, or by duration. So if I'm interested in my users that have made the most amount of cost but aren't assigned, I could set this by cost, and I would want it by ascending. And let's start by looking at our top 20 users that haven't, or 20 endpoints that haven't been assigned in my public demo manual tree here. So if I now click generate, what it will now do is show me all my endpoints here, sorted by cost and ascending. Maybe I want it by call. So I want to see which endpoints have made the most amount of calls that need to be assigned. So all these numbers basically haven't been assigned in my directory or in my source data. Therefore, from this list here, I may need to go and add this phone number into my source data and then go and click refresh on directory integration to then add it. So the first thing you'd need to do is go and find out who owns that phone which department they're in, go into your directory, assign that endpoint to a person and a department, 
And then that next time the person makes a call, that endpoint will then have all of its calls assigned correctly to a person. These reports are useful to make sure that obviously you are billing everybody because for example here, because that phone wasn't assigned to somebody, we haven't been able to bill out 540 pound for this particular endpoint. So it is important that obviously, you know, you get this report on a regular basis or check this report on a regular basis to make sure you are assigning all of your endpoints to a tree. So the final part that we're gonna look at if you don't have this option enabled on your Tiger Prism platform, then it may be that it's not in the version that you have, but it's also, if it is something that you would like, then let one of us here at Tiger know and we'll be able to help you. So there is also a directory search option. Directory search allows you to quickly search through your directory and export your directory in a flat format. So on the left-hand side, you have two options. You can either search by endpoint or by directory view. So by endpoint, this means that all endpoints will appear in your list. So these are all endpoints that we've seen, calls been made on, and you'll be able to see who they're assigned to, either by choosing your different trees here as well. So I can see that this endpoint here is not assigned to anybody. So that's obvious to see, so I could go and then assign this endpoint in my tree. If I come back in here, I'll be able to do a refresh and be able to see what department they're assigned to. I also have the ability to turn on all these extra columns, so I could add on all these extra columns here. Maybe I wanna add in all their custom fields, so I can build up an export and then what I can do is I can export this directory to Excel, for example, and I can then go and ask either my phone maintainer or my HR department who owns this phone and which departments they're in, populate the information and then add it into the directory, or I can go into my master source and update the users to have the correct information against them. You can filter on any one of these columns. So if you're only interested in the gold medal department, for example, you can filter on that department. When you export, it will only export what is on the screen. There is also a quick search at the top here. So if you look for the word Smith, for example, it will find anything in your grid at the bottom here that contains the word Smith. If you do have a filter, this then also filters, quick filters on there. If you don't have any filters, it will look in any column to go and find the word Smith. So it's just a quick way of going and looking through your directory here. The directory view is the same as the endpoint view. It works in the same way. Except in this instance here, you'll get all levels, all organization levels here, as well as the endpoints as well. Again, you can export and you can enable and disable columns here at the bottom. Thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. And if there is anything else you would like to learn about Tiger Prism and its other modules, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.